Heston Blumenthal. With his Spanish colleague Ferran Adria, he has had a significant impact on molecular cuisine over the years and continues his intensive cooperation with science to this day. This is not only important for his new creations, but also has very practical motives. For me, science is important in cooking for several reasons, and particularly in restaurant cooking. Because if you were to cook, let's say you have three or four or five dishes that you love to cook and you think you're really good at, and you think all the people that eat it will love it, you cook those dishes. You can almost do it with your eyes closed. It's intuitive. It's got just about cooking with touch and taste. The kitchen environment is very different. In a gastronomic kitchen, I think many people don't realize this, a bit like an orchestra, no, no one person will cook a dish from the beginning to the end. So that means you have to get consistency is the most important thing. If you want to dine at the Fat Duck, you have to book months in advance. 50 people cook here and serve lunch and dinner to 42 guests daily. Guests need to set aside at least four hours to enjoy the celebrity chef's creations. All the efforts here are directed at giving guests an exceptional dining experience in every way. The central element is the quality of the dishes. They are reviewed and discussed in the kitchen until the very last moment. Snail porridge is one of the dishes that has made Heston Blumenthal world famous. He has always been fascinated by using novel cooking techniques to create new taste sensations. For me, it's not, cooking isn't about going with mathematical formulae. It's about touch and taste and feel and then the ideas, but then understanding the science of cooking allows you to think of other things, new things to do, and it also allows you to be more accurate with your cooking uh, textures. Heston Blumenthal works with various scientists in England. He employs 15 cooks in Bray exclusively to develop new dishes. For example, using herbs that they have not yet experimented with. Heston Blumenthal wants to take his avant-garde cooking style a step further. On his way to becoming a universally admired top chef, he not only learned to work very accurately with ingredients, but also to break with old cooking traditions. I taught myself classical French cooking, from souffle making to sauce making, butchery to fishmongery. And along the way, there were things that I discovered that were written in classical French cooking that aren't actually true. For example, the fact that you should not wash or soak mushrooms because they'll soak up the water. That's not true. Take some mushrooms, cut them in half, take half of them, weigh them, soak another half, the other half, and weigh them after. There's hardly any difference in weight, so it doesn't make a difference. Probably the biggest, the biggest kitchen law that is not true, and you must have heard this, brown the meat to keep in the juices. It's just, it's not true. Heston Blumenthal has always had a great thirst for knowledge and experimentation. The world's first experiments with liquid nitrogen in the kitchen took place in these laboratories in Bray. Today, it's an essential part of any molecular cuisine. <coughs> Dishes that are shock cooled in liquid nitrogen at nearly 200 degrees below zero have become a permanent part of the menu at the Fat Duck. For instance, this smooth, melt-in-the-mouth green tea and lime mousse ball, which was only given the chef's blessing after countless experiments. 90% of all of our experiments are what a lot of people would think quite dull. So we might take vanilla ice cream, we might take six vanilla ice creams, and in the same recipe, apart from the egg yolk content, we might just change the egg yolk content to look at how the vanilla flavor is released. We might do six ice creams, one with su white sugar, one with brown sugar, one with honey, one with glucose, to see how the sweetness affects the taste, to see how long they stay, stay in the texture for, how long it takes them to melt. So all of the creative stuff won't work unless you've got an absolute solid foundation. That's so important. But playfulness also has its place. 
The edible sand in Sound of the Sea was prepared with cassava roots. Sound of the Sea is a classic of the house. Kingfish, halibut and mackerel are all marinated in advance and each contributes a unique taste. The fish are elaborately decorated with various sea grasses. One of Heston Blumenthal's credos is that the visual effect of a dish must never be neglected. Now the only thing still needed is the roaring surf. An air made from the juice of various species of seaweed and dried shiitake mushrooms complements the work of art. And to give the dish a really intoxicating swoosh, a specially equipped shell provides the sound effects. I often get asked, do I think, is cooking is it a science or an art? Well, they're both involved. It's hard for a chef to call himself an artist because it sounds a little bit pretentious. Um, but I would say the most important thing with food, from our point of view, not that you need it, you need it to live, of course, but for giving pleasure, the most important thing for pleasure is this, it's the brain. So the ingredients and the senses and the techniques and the way that we cook the food all send signals ultimately to the brain and they give us pleasure with our food. The tasting menu in the Fat Duck has 15 courses. Only the very best from the restaurant's own laboratory kitchens makes it onto the menu. The Fat Duck is still the heart of Heston Blumenthal's company, which now employs almost 300 people in his four different restaurants and experimental kitchens. The secret of his success lies in his avant-garde creations, which never fail to inspire. His extraordinary skill is a byword as far away as Southeast Asia and Australia, thanks to numerous TV shows. Anyone who has ever dined in the Fat Duck won't easily forget the sensory experience they were given. For example, Blumenthal's variation of the Black Forest Gatto, a six-layer cake accompanied by a cherry aroma sprayed in front of the guests' noses as an additional stimulator. In a funny way, you know, we think about, oh, chefs are creative, scientists are not creative people. Some of the most creative people I've met are scientists. Just because they've got a white coat on and a clipboard, they, they, they still have lots of ideas. And cooking, for me, works very similar to the science that I've experienced is that chefs can learn a lot from scientists, but scientists can learn an awful lot from chefs. Mutual inspiration is extremely important for this pioneer of molecular gastronomy. It forms the basis for the culinary art of the 21st century. <laughs> 